Helsinki, the capital of Finland, boasts luxurious public saunas, the 28-foot Bad Bad Boy statue, and an entire department store dedicated to the Moomin universe. It's also at risk of being swallowed up by melting glaciers and rising sea levels. Across the globe, Bangkok, Thailand, and its saunas and slightly more distinguished statues are facing a similar battle. And so are Jakarta, Indonesia, Lagos, Nigeria, and New York City in the United States. It's not just cities, either. Rural coastal areas in China, the Maldives, the Solomon Islands, and the Chesapeake Bay area in the U.S. will be some of the most affected as sea levels rise and flooding increases. All over the world, cities, small towns, and rural areas are all facing similar problems. Rising sea levels and changing weather patterns are putting communities at risk. So you'd think we could work together to fight the good fight and not have to invest in paddleboarding lessons. But a plan to protect the bad, bad boy might not be effective in Bangkok. Every community has its own specific sustainability challenges, and that means local governments need to come up with their own specific plans to meet their needs. Hi, I'm Miriam Nielsen, and this is Study Hall Sustainability. Lots of regions have already started making changes to protect themselves from a watery demise. Bangkok has created more parks and green spaces to hold excess water, and the Chesapeake Bay Area is creating living shorelines by planting native plants to curb flooding. But in order to have any of these solutions, local and regional governments first need to come up with a plan. For example, sustainability plans provide concrete guidance to address sustainability concerns and move toward a more prosperous future. To work, they need to be pretty comprehensive and outline sustainable actions for everything from transportation to energy use to park design to the water supply. Governments can also create climate action plans, which focus specifically on carbon emissions mitigation. For many governments, the first step toward creating a climate action plan is creating a greenhouse gas emissions inventory, or taking stock of all sources of greenhouse gas emissions in their jurisdiction to understand what they're working with. Armed with that information, governments can set specific emission reduction goals. For example, New York City introduced its first sustainability plan in 2007, known as Plan NYC. It included several strategies to help the city adapt to challenges like population growth, aging infrastructure, and rising temperatures. Over the years, as new challenges have popped up, New York's plan has also evolved to meet their changing needs. Like in 2012, Hurricane Sandy surged into New York City, decimated the L train, displaced thousands of people, caused an estimated $19 billion in damages, and killed 44 people, all highlighting the dire need for a better storm response system. Since then, both the city and state government have increased their efforts to make the city storm safe, or at least storm safer. They place flood barriers in flood-prone locations like the wealthy neighborhoods on the waterfront in Lower Manhattan and the east shore of Staten Island, even though Brooklyn and Queens are considered the areas with the higher risk for floods. They also implemented more natural solutions. Even though we generally think of New York as a concrete jungle, the city actually contains thousands of acres of wetlands, mostly located in Jamaica Bay, Staten Island, and by the Long Island Sound. And ecosystems like wetlands can help the city weather the effects of climate change, as they help slow flooding and can reduce storm surges. So the New York City Wetlands Strategy invested $56 million into restoring and creating wetlands, which meant they were protecting the city's more urban areas and preserving natural habitats in a sustainability double whammy. One thing about New Yorkers, they're always down for efficiency. How else are you going to order a bagel and have a meeting with your boss at the same time? But the work toward flood resilience is a little like New York City traffic, in that it never stops. In 2021, nine years after Sandy, Hurricane Ida hit New York City, and 13 people died. Notably, Brooklyn Brooklyn and Queens were hit particularly hard. The city continues to invest billions of dollars in flood resilience and other sustainability measures. Green solutions to urban flooding also work in cities that don't necessarily have acres and acres of green space. These cities can install bioswales, which are small pockets of green space that can slow runoff and reduce stormwater overflows, flooding, and pollutants flowing into local bodies of water. Bioswales can filter millions of gallons of stormwater each year. Nature-based solutions can also help combat the urban heat island effect, which is when cities have higher temperatures thanks to all that concrete absorbing and then slowly releasing heat from the sun. The more concrete and fewer trees and other green stuff a neighborhood has, the hotter it's going to be. The urban heat island effect increases cooling costs and causes heat-related illnesses and death. And it's a problem that overwhelmingly impacts lower-income communities and people of color. According to one analysis, neighborhoods in the U.S. with a majority of residents of color have 33% less tree cover than neighborhoods with a majority of white residents. And as of 2024, experts predict that the number of U.S. residents living in disadvantaged communities who will be exposed to health-threatening heat waves could increase by 25 million by 2050. To help protect residents, cities across the country are including increased green space in their sustainability plans. For example, Washington, D.C. has set the goal to plant over 8,000 trees every year to achieve 40% tree cover by 2032. And in Portland, Oregon, it's a requirement that any new buildings 20,000 square feet or bigger must have a green roof, which is a roof with green stuff on it. 
In 2019, the city had over 400 green roofs and counting. Rural areas with a lot less concrete and a lot more space for trees have their own sustainability challenges to face. They'll also need plans in place to protect their environments and the well-being of their residents. And government initiatives are helping rural communities become more economically and environmentally sustainable. For example, Greensburg, Kansas has become a model of rural sustainability. In May 2007, a tornado destroyed 95% of the town. And when the time came to rebuild, Greensburg residents decided to center sustainability to reduce costs and increase efficiency making the town stronger, better, greener than it was before. With the help of the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Energy, and private sustainability consultants, they were able to develop a unique sustainability plan to meet their needs. The plan included goals for renewable energy, water conservation, a new green stormwater system, and sustainable building. That's not the only kind of green this plan is putting back into Greensburg. The town's sustainability plan also focuses on efficiency when it comes to finances, which is pretty important when you're rebuilding an entire town. Greensburg's new K-12 school, completed in 2010 uses geothermal heat and wind energy, which ends up saving the school around $150,000 a year in energy costs. And the town's new city hall also uses renewable energy. Plus, it was constructed out of bricks from a power plant that the tornado destroyed. Putting these kinds of plans into action helps improve lives for residents and decrease a community's negative environmental impacts. And even though sustainability and climate action plans are tailored to specific towns, cities, and regions, that doesn't mean these plans and sustainable actions only benefit that particular area. For example, in Washington state, one county's climate action plan is helping the entire state reach its goals of reducing its greenhouse gas emissions to 95% below 1990 levels by 2050. The people of Whatcom County in Northwest Washington learned that about 51% of their emissions came from the industrial manufacturing processes of two refineries, an aluminum smelter and a power plant. So they set a target of reducing emissions to 45% below 1990 levels by 2030, and matching the state goal of a 95% reduction by 2050. They plan to transition their existing refineries away from fossil fuels in favor of a clean power source, and ban the construction of any new refineries. And in France, changes made in rural areas help Paris reach its sustainability goals. There, the Vaughan Aqueduct runs from Normandy in the north to Burgundy, which is south of Paris. It runs mainly through rural regions and farmland, and as it flows through the countryside, it picks up all those fertilizers and pesticides farmers use in their fields. This not only impacts the rural communities and ecosystems along the river, but also the City of Lights itself. That's because Paris receives one-fifth of its tap water from the Vaughan, and all that pollution means it requires a whole bunch of expensive water processing to turn it into something drinkable. So France's urban center is helping its rural regions go green to benefit everyone. In 2020, Paris's public water service spent $51.8 million to help 115 farms reduce their use of pesticides and fertilizers or go fully organic. Not only does this save Parisians money on water processing, it also helps preserve biodiversity in the region and decrease soil degradation. Plus, the process of producing fertilizers and pesticides has a huge carbon footprint, so the less farms use, the better. Rural areas help cities in other ways, too. They have way fewer buildings and way more open space, which makes city people think they're a great spot for renewable energy projects like solar panel arrays and wind turbines. In fact, 99% of onshore wind farms are in rural regions. And while people living in rural areas might not be any more excited than city people about having wind turbines in their backyards and cornfields, the energy they produce is good for everyone. It gives people all over the country more clean energy options and cuts greenhouse gases. But it goes both ways. Rural areas don't just exist for the benefit of cities. The actions of cities impact rural areas too. Cars crowding the streets spit carbon emissions into the atmosphere we all live in. Clearing trees in favor of skyscrapers removes carbon sinks and uses carbon-intensive resources that impact the planet we all live on. And therefore, a city reducing emissions cleans up the atmosphere for all of us. And a city reducing flood risk by creating green space creates carbon sinks and reduces social and economic impacts for all of us. Whether we're putting more green stuff in cities or adding more infrastructure in rural areas, the end goal is the same. To address local challenges, play to local strengths, and work to build a more sustainable present and future not only for the local community, but for the whole region, country, or even the entire world. Because from Whatcom County to Washington, D.C., from Burgundy to Bangkok, how increased temperatures, rising sea levels, flooding, storms, and all the rest impact people and communities are unique to each region. Still, everywhere has and will continue to face environmental challenges, and no place is entirely safe from the impacts of climate change. But how we respond can make a difference. The plans we draw up and the actions we take to improve and protect our towns and cities won't just matter for the future of those towns and cities, it also matters for all the rest of us right now and in the future. If you're enjoying this series and are interested in taking the full Study Hall sustainability course and earning college credit from ASU, check out GoStudyHall.com or click on the button to learn more. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like, comment what climate concerns are affecting your area, and smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.